Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to check if an email address is already in use or not in a Node.js application. In many web applications, it is important to validate user input and ensure that certain data is unique, such as email addresses for user accounts. In this video, we will walk through the process of creating a Node.js application that checks if a given email address is already in use or not using a MySQL database to store and retrieve user information. To achieve this, we will use several core technologies and libraries, including Node.js, Express Library, and MySQL. By the end of this video, you will have a working Node.js application that can check if an email address is already in use or not. Now let's start discussing this topic. So this is our testing database. And under this, we have one users table, and under this table, we have already inserted one user data, with John Smith at the rate gmail.com, email has been already inserted. So in this application, we will make Node.js application, for check email already exist or not. So for this, first we want to make Node.js working environment, so we have goes to command prompt. And here, we have goes to directory, from where we want to create node application. And here, we have run this command, which will make, email exist or not directory. And under this directory, we want to download, node express library. So here, we have to run this command, which will download node JS express library. Now we have opened this directory under text editor. So here, we can see that node JavaScript required library has been downloaded in our working directory. Now under this directory, we have create one index.html file. And under this file, we have paste some HTML code under this file. Now we want to create one HTML form for enter email address details. Now we have start by creating a basic HTML form with an ID of email form. Under this form, we have includes a label element for the email address input. And for enter email address details, here we have create an input element with a type of email and a name of email. And here, we have write id attribute email input, which we will use, for get text box value, in javascript code. Next, we will add a span element, with an id of email message, which will display the availability status, of the email address. We will use javascript to update the text content of this element dynamically, based on the response from the server. We have also include a button element with a type of submit, and an ID of submit button, which triggers the form submission, when we have clicked. Now we have to write, JavaScript code for send Ajax request to, Node.js script, for check email is exists or not. First, we declare a constant variable named form. And assign it, the value of the HTML element with id, email form, using the query selector method. Next, we declare another constant variable named message and assign it, the value of the HTML element with id, email message, using the query selector method. Now we add an event listener, to the form element that listens for, submit, event, and takes a callback function as a parameter. Inside the callback function, we first prevent the default behavior of the form submission, using the event.preventDefault method. Next, we have to retrieve the value of the email input field, 
by selecting the element with ID, email input, and using the dot value property to get its value. After this, we then check if the email input field is not empty using an if statement like email variable value is not equal to blank. If the email input field is not empty, then we have to make an AJAX request to check if the email is already in use. So we have to first create a new instance of the this XML HTTP request object. Now we have to open a POST request to the this URL with the TRUE parameter to specify as an asynchronous request. After this, we have to set the content type of the request to application slash JSON by using the set request header method. Next we have to set the onload method of the XML HTTP request object to a callback function that checks the status of the response and performs the appropriate action. Now inside the onload callback function, we have to first check if the status of the response is 200 which indicating a successful request. If the request is successful, then we have to pass the response as a JSON object by using the JSON.pass method. Now we have to check if the email exists property of the response object is true, which indicating that the email is already in use. If this condition true, then we to set the inner HTML of the message element to a red color badge, with message like, email is already in use. But if the, email exists, property is not true, then we have to set the, inner HTML of the message element to a green color badge, with message like, email is available. But if the status of the response is not 200, so we have to set the inner HTML of the message element with message like, error checking email availability. After this, we have to set the on error method of the XML HTTP request object to a callback function. And if this there is any error occur, then it will set the inner HTML of the message element with error message like error checking email availability. Finally, we have to send the email variable value as a JSON object using the JSON.stringify method. And lastly if email variable value is blank, then it will set the inner HTML of the message element with error message like, please enter email. Now we have moved to node javascript code and goes into app.javascript file and under this file. First, we have imported the Express module, which is a popular Node JavaScript web framework, using the require keyword and assigned it to a constant variable called Express. After this, we want to download my SQL module, so here in command prompt, we have to run this code, which will download my SQL module. Now here, we have to import it the my SQL module, which is a node package for working with my SQL databases. After this, we want to download CORS module, so here in command prompt, we have to run this command, which will download CORS module, under our working directory. Now here, we have to import the, CORS module, which is a node package for providing a middleware, that enables cross-origin resource sharing for the server. Next we have to create a new instance of the express framework by invoking it as a function and assigning it to a constant variable called app. After this, we have to set the value of a constant variable called port to 3000, which is the port number on which the server will listen for incoming requests. Next we have to define the new constant variable called connection, which is a MySQL database connection object. 
Now we have passed the database credentials to this object to establish a connection to the MySQL database. So here, we have to write host key with value localhost. After this, we have to write user key with value root. Next we have to write password as key and in value, we have to write blank value. And last, we have to write database as key and in value, we have to write testing so this code will make database connection. After this, we have established a connection to the MySQL database using the connect method of the connection object. Now we have to set up some middleware using the use method of the app object. So first, we have to enable CORS by adding the CORS middleware. And then, we have added the built-in express.json middleware to pass incoming JSON requests. Now we have to define a new route using the post method of the app object. So this route listens for post requests to the check email endpoint. So when a request is received, so we have to extract the email parameter from the request body by writing this code. Now we want to write select query for check email available or not in database. So here, we have to write, SQL variable is equal to, select count star as count from users table, where email is equal to question mark. Now for execute this query, so here we have to write, connection dot query method, with three parameter. In first parameter, we have to write, SQL variable, and in second parameter, we have to write, email variable in an array format, and in last argument, we have to write, error and results variable. Now from results variable, we can access query execution result. So here, we have to write, count variable is equal to, results variable with zero index dot count. So here we have store result, in count variable. This line of code is assigning a boolean value to the variable email exists by comparing the count variable which holds the number of rows returned from the MySQL query to the number 1. If the count variable equals to 1, then email exists is set to true which indicating that the email already exists in the database. If count is not equal to 1, then email exists is set to false which indicating that the email is available. Now this line of code sends a JSON response to the client with an object that contains the email exists property. The value of email exists is a boolean that indicates whether or not the email address provided in the request already exists in the database. This response is sent as the final step in the check email route, which is used to check if an email address already exists in the database. Lastly, we have to start the server by calling the listen method of the app object and passing in the port number. When the server is started, we have to display server started message with port number. So here code is ready. Now for check output, we have to go to command prompt. And here, we have to write node space app.js file name and run this command, so it will start node server.
Now here, we have to open HTML file in the browser. So it has display simple HTML form on the web page in which we can enter email address details. Now first, we have click on button so it has display error message like please enter email address details. After this, we have entered john underscore smith at the rate gmail.com and after this, we have click on button so it has display email already exists error message on the web page. So this indicate that this email already available in database. Now we have removed this underscore. And after this, we have click on button. So now it has display this email is available. So we can use this email for registration because this email is not found in my SQL database. So this way we can check that email is available for registration or not in node and reduce span registration. We hope you found this tutorial useful and learned something new. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us. Do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials like this. And lastly, thank you for watching.